Salman Joshua Nimak always knew there was something unusual about him. For one, right from a tender age, he knew God's hand was upon him. There's this knowing you cannot explain, but then every time I watch TV and I saw anything that uh, had to do with ministry, the grace of God, there was this witness that I had within me. Someday, <laughs> I'll be the one doing this, you know. And so, while most children his age were concerned with playing, Salmon was almost always alone in his room, studying the Word of God. And one day, Salmon raised his little hands in surrender to Jesus Christ during a Sunday school session. But while in secondary school, Salmon began to experience the extraordinary in his life. It started when a mentor began to teach Salmon how to know God even better. He taught us things like spiritual growth, quiet time. He formulated a quiet time booklet for us that we had to follow through. Uh, he taught us the ethics of good Christian character. He helped me uh, because I had uh, a bit of a challenge growing up in terms of complex and uh, trying to reconcile my dreams and the things that I see around me. It opened me up to every motivation that I needed and I really loved God. I, I, I um, began to pursue Him, seek Him truly and sincerely from my heart. And that was when Selman began to witness the supernatural. We had a program where a man of God was invited and then he prayed for those who wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and that would be an experience of a lifetime I got filled with the Holy Ghost. We did extraordinary things in the school. I mean, there were five of us. We started working in miracles, I mean real miracles. Uh, I was so super intelligent, it was amazing. I started seeing things in the spirit, didn't know what they were, I mean angels, manifestations, I would receive words about things and they would happen. You know, I would pray for students, I remember praying for one of our students who was a stammerer and he got healed. It wasn't a big deal because uh, we were just acting by faith. Sadly, we had a time when um, they preached against all of these things that we walked in and we really backslided. We're not prayerful again, we're not open to the things of the Spirit. We literally shut the door of the Holy Spirit. But all this changed with one encounter. On the 2nd of December 2002, I'll never forget, someone walked up to me in the night and tapped me. I was sleeping. I mean, literally tapped me. I wasn't dreaming. And I woke up. I didn't see anybody, but I knew it was Jesus. I cannot tell you how I knew. I knew it was Jesus. That would be my first uh, dramatic encounter with him. I knew it was Jesus. I began to cry. I began to sob. I got down on my knees. I began to pray and I said, Lord, I rededicate myself for your use, for your service. By the time he got into the university, Salmon's hunger for God became unquenchable. I used to spend time um, praying and just seeking God. And um, sometimes I'll go to the dam and um, just pray and tell God, Lord, I know that my life is supposed to bring you glory, but I'm tired of living a purposeless life. And, you know, I, I remember praying and crying and I'll stay sometimes from morning to night telling the Lord, you must use me, tell me, let me know why I am here on earth. One night, I had a dramatic vision. Um, I was standing in front of the tower, really one of the hostels in the uh, uh, university campuses and suddenly I saw a crowd of people I couldn't see the end of them it was a sea of people and the people were crying they were sobbing and in that vision they were saying there was no food and no water I and I said really I mean I was I was I had compassion upon the people suddenly in the vision it became like I had the key to the storehouse of that entire generation 
and I asked the people, I said, is it my fault? They said, yes, it's your fault. We are dying of thirst, you know, talking about the bread of, uh, the, the water of life and the bread of life and all of that. And, and I told them, I, I will be coming down right now to rescue you. I got up from that vision. I cried and it put a fire in my spirit. I knew that God had called me to be a preacher, to be a minister. The most dramatic of all experiences was when I met Jesus himself and there he was standing before me, the King of Kings himself. I have seen him, I know he's alive. I cannot tell you what he looks like. The beauty and the brilliance on his face, the love, the power, the light. I was flat on the floor like a dead man. I understand what Isaiah said. You know, he said, you know, the Lord high and lifted up and the train of his robe. I saw him in his glory, Jesus. I knew instantly that this was Jesus Christ. He didn't tell me anything. All he did was stretch his hands towards me and a beam of light. There is no human way that light uh, would come upon me in the physical without destroying me. I mean, it would disintegrate me in seconds. But that beam of light, and remember the Bible says, the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding. That encounter brought a level of anointing into my life. I had unusual insights into the word of God. I, I suddenly was opened fully into the realm of angels, miracles, visions, insight, faith. Faith, the faith of the Son of God came upon me. I mean, I knew all things were possible. All things. The whole world needs to know Jesus Christ. Believe me, he's not one leader of a religion. He is Lord. When you see him, you will know the earth belongs to him. You will know he's not contending for a position. He's not scratching his head wondering what to do. He's in control. I love him today beyond ministry i have seen his glory i have seen his grace but i can trade i mean i cannot trade any of these things for him let ministry go let the world go let money go let marriage go believe me believe me i mean this from the depths of my heart i will not trade the world for jesus christ Whew. amazing is all i can say we'll take a break now but we'll be back shortly with the concluding part of this incredible story about Selman's journey with God. Don't go anywhere. Dear Emily, I dropped by again this morning to say hello. I guess you were running late. You ran right by me. At the noon hour, I thought we might have some time to spend together. But you were busy with your friends. And though you didn't invite me over later that night, I could truly sense your loneliness, your fears. And I want you to know that even though you had no time for me this morning or tonight, when you wake up tomorrow, I'll still be around, hoping that today you'll take some time to spend with me. Love always, Jesus. You can search the entire universe, but you'll never find anyone who knows you and loves you more than Jesus Christ. Would you like to meet him today? Call or write the 700 Club. Welcome back. Selma's story is one that challenges me, and I hope you're as eager as I am to know how it ended. Well, let's get back and see how it all unfolds. began with a deep longing for God. Then gradually, Salman Joshua Nimak was opened into the realm of the supernatural. What began to happen blew even his mind. I would go to a place of solitude and just sit alone for hours and hours, digging on the scripture, fishing out things, writing all the visions, and many times the glory of God would literally come and mantle me. I mean, sometimes I would see a mist, a literal mist, a cloud, sometimes in the shape of a man, sometimes the angels of God would come to me 
uh, visiting me, bringing me words. This the real experience is when you are in the realm of eternity, time is not a factor again. And as Salmon sought to know God better, he began to see a ripple effect of the same hunger he had for God in the lives of others. People began to come around. The presence of God is very attractive. I would share some of the experience with them and sometimes the presence of God will come upon us, we will cry, we will weep, pray, study. Uh, every evening was a time we looked forward to because after class, after all of this, I mean, we didn't have time for any other thing. No time for, it was a sacrifice. Everything, the making of a champion at any level requires sacrifice. You must forgo something. Many times the presence of God will be so strong, we'll have to take people, I mean literally carry people back to their hostels. It was a dramatic experience. And in a short while, the campus was least prepared for what God began to do through Selman's life. People began to come uh, for me to just talk with them, to counsel them. The sick started coming, I started praying for them. You know, when one person got healed, he would go back and tell more people, hey, come and see this and all of that. At a point it became, it became um, a nightly unorganized meeting, no ushers, no nothing. People would just come, would sit down, share the word. I couldn't explain it. I wasn't bringing the people. They couldn't stop coming. They were coming every night. They would cry the presence of God. I would teach for hours from about 10 till about 3, sometimes 2, 4 o'clock. And these were students, uh, you know, and all of that. I was also a student then so it was it was a challenging experience thanks to Salmon's unrelenting pursuit of God several thousands of people have come to know Jesus including drug addicts prostitutes cult members and many more Countless more have been delivered from addiction to sex, masturbation, pornography, drinking, smoking, and several other vices common among young people. There have been many changes in my life since I met Joshua Selman. I was a little bit violent, but the ministry taught me humility. It brought it into me. I've received a transformation in my spirit, fellowship with God, and I've received more of his knowledge. That maybe to be able to practice, like heal the sick, stretch my faith, and believe God for a lot of things that seem impossible. I can mention my finances, I can mention my academics, then my relationship with God, most importantly, it has taken a whole new level. I relate now with the Holy Spirit like a friend. God like a friend, like, I don't say anything, there's no barrier for me. I now understand the new creation reality very well. You can live in the supernatural all through your life at any time. Know what you want, find the price of, uh, of what you want, then pay the price and you will get it. I know that God created me here for a purpose. And my purpose is to do His will because that was the prayer that Jesus Christ gave to His disciples. And everyone has an assignment in every sector, not just being in church or preaching. But we could do this in our offices, in our homes, in our schools, anywhere we are. We can be a blessing to people and we can bring God's kingdom to that aspect and avenue. With thousands of such young hearts well taught and leaving the school with such deep understanding of their purpose, one can only imagine the great impact each of them will make in their society even after graduation. God is raising people. These are ordinary people. We must quit the ministry mindset and begin to think kingdom. Because the revival is coming upon the earth. Greater than the Phoenix revival, the Lord told me this. Greater than the Azusa Street revival, our fathers of faith, Shambach, uh, Osborne, Charles and Francis Hunter, Catherine Kuhlman, Smith Wigglesworth, our fathers of faith, they are now the cloud of witnesses, but they left a prophecy with our generation that a revival would come greater than the Azusa Street revival, and we are preparing. Can I tell you something? This country and the world is separated into two mission fields and training grounds.
just like the whole terrorist camp god is training his people we do not see them yet ordinary people in the marketplaces housewives students our universities are also schools of the spirit there is a revival that the world is not ready for and it's not going to be the way the the revivals in the 60s and the 70s because we're invading the mountains the media god is sending media apostles media generals men and women who will invade politics government it's not just going to be the poopy thing again and this is why we must stay on course to get the patterns it is coming it draws closer every day I sense it every time this is why I have a sense of urgency to prepare God's army and Salmon said that is his one desire although he has graduated from the university he also says his assignment on that campus and beyond is not over yet and he intends to keep at it until God tells him his next assignment. I love the Lord with all my heart. I love him beyond ministry. I love him beyond title. I measure success according to how much of the plan and the prophecy of God on the earth is being achieved. See, that's, that's what we call success. So I want to see that the whole earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As much as... Um, it will be wonderful to be remembered for pioneering different revivals, being a general of faith and all of these things. I think the greatest testimony, I covet the testimony of Enoch. The Bible says an Enoch walked with God. It's a different thing to walk for God. I want to walk with God so closely that this earth will not be worthy of holding me again. And it will be a glorious exit. And if it means me being called a failure from the earth perspective to walk with him, this is all I want. I love him with all of my heart and my greatest testimony and what I want to be remembered for is that and Joshua Selma Nimak walked with God and he was not. <laughs> mm. You've seen and heard it all. It's time to heed the call. It's simple. Jesus is coming back soon. Are you ready for his coming? And while we are awaiting his coming, we must remember that we are all here on assignment and our time is fast running out. So we, all God's people, must rise up and stop wasting time, stop being distracted by things that don't matter in the long run. The Bible encourages us to redeem the times because the days are evil. You heard Selman. It's not about how polished you are, how educated you are. God has well equipped each of us for the task that we each have. All we need to do is spend quality time with him, get specific instructions and get to work. And even if you feel that you haven't heard anything specific from God, he has called us all to do the work of an evangelist. Love somebody and lead them to Christ. Don't get them saved from the destruction that is to come. Now for you listening to me and you know that God is calling you, you may have been running from the call all this time. It's time to stop running, my dear friend, and do the only thing that will give your life meaning. Obey God. Perhaps you've allowed sin and past mistakes to come between you and Jesus. Then let's start by getting things right immediately. Or maybe you've even, you haven't even made Jesus your Lord and Savior. It's not too late for that either. As you've heard, he's coming soon. So let's prepare for him. So why not repeat these words after me and mean them? Say, dear God, I come to you because I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you in the way I've lived my life. And I'm asking you to forgive me. By the blood of Jesus, the Christ, your son who died, come and live in my heart, Lord Jesus. Come and make my life your own so that I will live for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, let's pray for the release of God's power over you to rise up and fulfill God's assignment for you here on earth. Let's pray.